Maverick Physical Therapy episodes on uh, base running strategies. Wearing a little what I call, uh, is what we call in the AFS community, a little fascia of my eldest man cub Maverick. His little baseball team, the Bats, who my uh, coach. Do some really interesting stuff with the Bats in terms of incorporating a lot of great fundamental skill development and play time. Uh, very similar to, to what I did when I was with the Minnesota Twins organization. Uh, for them, it's learning a lot of the, the fundamentals and a lot of the basics as it is at the higher levels in terms of refinement and doing the simple things, the fundamental things, better than everyone else. We, uh, we spent a lot of time uh, with our locomotive skills setting up bases and playing around the bases uh, in the normal counterclockwise manner and then also the clockwise manner uh, to reverse things up. Um, the, uh, the unique, uh, some unique opportunities presented itself when I first started with the, uh, the Twins organization in that uh, the conditioning work that the, uh, that the position players were involved in was, was next to nothing. And uh, amongst our complex out of Fort Myers, we had a series of softball fields that were on the premise uh, for uh, league-like play for uh, civilians throughout the week tucked away in one of the back corners. Well, uh, before we would head on out and over to our field um, a lot of days, we would kind of secretly head on over there and use the softball fields which were set up uh, with obviously much smaller bases, 65, 70 feet, and I had bases of my own. We'd make them even, uh, the distance is even shorter. And we use that strategy for a lot of, and a variety of reasons. We used, uh, we used it for the obvious, we used uh, it pertaining to conditioning. Um, and then also the, the ramping up of dynamic uh, stability with regards to the foot and the ankle complex, because if we took, if we talk about locomotion, and we take a look at all the pathological conditions today, and for the past 20 some years, with regards to the hamstring, the groin, the oblique related injuries, um, and pathologies and strains, we need to certainly take a look at the foot and the ankle. And we look up core in Webster's dictionary we see the word genesis subsiding behind uh, the defined word of core. And genesis, in the beginning, so in the beginning we have the foot and the ankle which is in contact with the ground, which has to first and foremost from the ground up be responsible for setting off a chain reaction with regards to the effects of gravity, momentum, inertia, and then their ground reaction forces. And whenever I assess my athletes, we're taking a look at a variety of transformational zones. A position player, we're looking at throwing, we're looking at hitting, we're looking at walking, we're also looking at obviously running because we look them up, we run in baseball. We're looking at those transformational zones and we're looking at the elements of functional three-dimensional stability and strength as well as mobility and a concept that I call as fast stability, fake stability. So we're looking at tendencies, we're looking at reactions, and we're looking at how the body is responding to the effects of gravity, momentum, inertia, and ground reaction force, where and how it's successful um, in terms of its uh, successes, but then also its compensation patterns. And we're then setting up a customized regimen with regards to how we can spiral that individual out of the process in which they currently are. And the base running strategies that we use uh, are not just for straight locomotion and running. We, and I have developed uh, a lengthy progressive series uh, with regards to single leg hopping um, in, those, uh, in those regards. So we're gonna be taking a look in these episodes, we're gonna be taking a look at our transformational zones, TZ1 and TZ2 of the foot and the ankle, the knee and the hip. We're gonna be talking about the angulation 
uh, based on the trajectory and the velocity of the human body that we start to develop as we run because locomotion in this case is not a linear act and it never is even for a street runner uh, that seemingly is running straight ahead primarily dominated by the frontal and the transverse planes so as we start to unless we're running and blowing right through first base to run on a ball uh, there's always some form of looping trajectory involved uh, with the patterns in which we move to get around the bases. So very much if, uh, and almost non-existent that we're only running, again, straight ahead. So that trajectory in which we're moving almost sees us at a little bit of an angle. Here's the right foot here, and we're going to show some close-ups of the foot and the ankle when we talk about the transformational zones. So you can almost think about it, it's a sloped hill down and to the right in which we're getting sucked out to the outfield uh, towards, uh, so as we're shifting, moving our way around first base, getting sucked out towards kind of that right field line down beyond past the right field line in the stands. And then as we're making that turn out to second base and then second base to third base, third base to home, et cetera, we're getting sucked outside and away from uh, the base pass. So we're gonna we're gonna be talking about some very very cool and interesting things. We're gonna be talking about position versus motion, the position of the feet and the ankle, or the foot and the ankle of these transformational zones. That's why we're breaking down one lower extremity at a time pertaining to the foot and the ankle and the hip, because they're pretty complex and sophisticated stuff that we're digging into here. Um, we'll be talking about the position that we're in and then the motion that we get based on that angulation um, and the trajectory the velocity in which we're moving that that, uh, that that is creating so hang on tight we've got some great stuff down the uh, down the chute for us